Hey guys, it's Ben Xiong from Learn ASP, Learn Australian Strength Performance. Now welcome back to our YouTube channel. And today, instead of doing what we normally do and run through an exercise, I'm gonna be talking about an interesting topic. We'll be delving into training smarts. Now one of the most frustrating things in the gym I bet you for most of you, would be the fact that you're progressing along, you're doing well, and then you hit this wall. It's like a plateau. When you hit this wall, your weights probably can't increase anymore. Uh, you may even get niggles or injuries, and you just don't seem to progress. Perhaps your physique has completely stalled. You can't actually lose any more fat, or you feel like you cannot put on any more muscle. In any case, you hit this wall in a plateau. Today, we'll be delving into plateaus. In fact, the training smarts of how you can effectively overcome these particular plateaus. Now, in the previous YouTube episodes, I've spoken about things like overtraining, and definitely overtraining could be a factor of why you hit a plateau. I've also given you a whole range of other examples with regards to exercise selections on how you can overcome those plateaus. But today, we'll be delving into theory. We'll be talking about three main areas of why you tend to hit that plateau and things you can do to overcome that to get you into a better space for training, lifting more and progressing the way you need to. So let's delve into today's YouTube. So we're gonna talk about point number one. And point number one of why you hit a plateau is often because the weight increments cannot go up anymore. So you might be choosing a particular weight and a particular rep range in the gym for a particular exercise. Now, let me give you an example. Most of the people who go to the gym often love to fluctuate between the 10 and the 12 rep ranges. These two numbers seem to have some sort of a magical effect on building muscle, hypertrophy. So you might choose, let's say, 10 to 12 reps, and you choose a particular weight when you're performing those 10 to 12 reps and making sure that you're hitting those reps. Often though, the goal of going to the gym is this concept of progressive overload. Now, progressive overload really is aiming to increase the load from session to session when you're performing the same exercise. So if you're doing 10 to 12 reps of 20 kilos today, next time when you go into the gym, you wanna to try to increase the load working within the same rep ranges. And this load continually increases. The reason for that is because your body often adapts. Now, adaptation is what leads to a plateau. So when your body adapts to a particular weight, you need to increase the load to make sure that you create the necessary changes in your body so you can lead to more muscle growth. So it's very, very important that progressive overload as a principle is being applied from session to session. Now, if you've heard me speak about this before, progressive overload sometimes is not just about the load. When you go to a commercial gym, you often find that the load increments would be things like a minimum of 1.25 kilos, some gyms even two and a half kilos. Now, two and a half kilos or 1.25 in a perspective of doing a squat, for example, can be a minimal increase. So if you're adding in 1.25 kilos per side doing a squat, that's a minimal increase in load. And so you may be able to work with that increase. But if let's say you're doing arms, you're going from seven and a half kilos or seven kilos per side, and you're adding on one and a half or 1.25 per side. That is a significant increase in load when you're doing a bicep curl. And so often you will not be able to keep increasing the load from session to session. And this becomes a problem because it becomes a plateau. So you cannot increase the load from session to session because the gym doesn't facilitate it. Now, here's a real handy tip that you guys can use. If you're working from home uh, or your gym doesn't have micro weights, micro weights are little plates that you can attach to the end of the dumbbell or a barbell that allows you to go up in the increments of perhaps, you know, uh, 100 grams or even 250 grams, 125 grams. Now, we have micro weights in our gym that allows us to go up to 125 grams 250 grams or 0.5, uh, which is 0.5 kilos, so half, half a kilo or 500 grams. Now, these little increments are very important, especially if you're working with smaller muscle groups like the arms. What you can do, though, if you don't have those microweights, is create them. So what I love to do is to give you ideas of how you can do that. Typically, if you're working from home or you have a barbell set or a dumbbell set at home, get little Ziploc bags. Use sand as the easiest way 
to increase load. So I'll put some sand in the Ziploc bags, kind of zip it up and tie it to my dumbbell. And obviously you weigh that out so you know each little bag could be 1.25 grams or you know 250 grams or half a kilo. And you kind of weigh that out so you can add it at the end of the dumbbells to increase that load from a micro uh, level. So it's small increments that allow you to continue to progress. Now, again, if you wanted to go the extra mile and actually purchase those micro plates, you can actually do that. There are magnetic micro plates that you can purchase or plates that actually just stick at the end. Now, in saying so, the focus of this first point is the fact that you plateau because you cannot increase your weights. Now I've given you a solution that you can use to increase your weights on a microscopic level or micro level allowing you to progress from session to session effectively. Next, if let's say you've chosen a particular rep range, which is typically 10 to 12, as we spoke about earlier, doing a weight and trying to increase that over time between 10 to 12, you will often hit a plateau as well with that rep range. Now, what do you do? What do you do if you, your weight can't go up anymore and you're stuck at that 12 reps? You cannot push 13 reps no matter how much you try. What do you do? You completely change the rep range. So here's a great tip. Instead of sticking to 10 to 12 reps, try to go up. You might want to choose something like 18 reps. Choose a number that is a lot higher and choose a weight that is a lot lighter. So you choose a lighter weight and your goal is trying to hit that 18 reps. The reason why you do that is it just changes the focus of the load itself. It takes away the stress of you trying to hit that load all the time. It gives your body a fresh stimulus. So in 18 reps, in the first time you try a lighter weight, you may just get 16 reps. You may not be able to hit 18, but that becomes your new goal for subsequent sessions. Using the same weight, try to go for 17 reps in the next session. The same weight, eating, hitting 18 reps in the session. If you can hit 18 reps and do that comfortably, then now if you drop the rep range, for example, you go down to 16 reps or 15 reps, the load can suitably increase as well. By the time you get back to the 10 to 12 rep range, you would have found that you have broken that original plateau and have started lifting a weight that is significantly heavier to what you could not break initially. So that's a great tip, is to go to a higher rep range and work your way down. Now, bear in mind the context of what I'm saying is the fact that when you increase the rep range or the reps that you're meant to do, the load decreases, okay? So the amount of reps that you choose and the load that you choose correlates with each other. The less reps you do, the load has to be heavier. The more reps you do, the weight chosen is naturally lighter. So don't be choosing a lightweight and trying to get as many reps as you can when you know that there should be a specific rep that you choose and the weight that you choose should be correlated to that particular rep or rep range. Point number two, and the second point we will be focusing on is actually learning to change the exercise if you have been repeating it for a certain amount of time over and over again and you feel that you've hit the wall with regards to progressing in that particular exercise. Don't try to continue to press through that exercise. Actually change it completely into something that allows you to work different angles or strength curves. So for example, if you have plateaued on an incline bench press, you may want to change your focus over the next few weeks from a bench press to doing a dumbbell press, perhaps at a different angle. This form of training, even though you're still working the chest, by changing the exercise itself, you allow the body to unadapt, break through that particular plateau, give it a new stimulus. This allows your body to focus on the recruitment of muscles. This allows your body to focus on the differential recruitment of muscles in the same area that you're focusing on, but also allows your body to progress in what it's doing. Okay, so learn to change the exercise up you're still working the same muscle group, but select a different exercise that could stimulate the muscles in a different way. Now, changing the strength curve, as I mentioned before, is also a different way of actually changing the exercise or choosing an exercise. If you're not familiar with this term strength curve, a strength curve is basically the amount of force that is being exerted through the exercise. Okay, so let me give you an example down here. If you are doing a 90 
degree back extension. They say you're doing a back extension. A 90 degree back extension means that it is, uh, the back extension is straight and your body is actually bent down and up. Okay, so you bend down to 90 degrees and coming up. So a 90 degree back extension, or some of you may actually use a glute ham raise to perform a, a back extension. If that's the case, you would find that at the lowest position of the back extension when your body is straight down, is actually quite easy. The most difficult part of the movement is when you come up to the top position. So you, you come up and you hold yourself at a horizontal. That's where it's the most difficult. So the exercise is extremely difficult at the top position and extremely easy or lightest at the bottom position. Okay, so this is what we call a descending strength curve. Now let's take another example, which is the 45 degree back extension. In the 45 degree back extension, this is the machine that is held at 45 degrees. You would find that at the top position, it's actually quite easy. As you go down and your body is horizontal, that actually is the most difficult position. And as, then, as you come down again all the way, bring your body down uh, towards the floor, that gets easier again. So it's actually easy to start off with, it gets difficult, and then it gets easy back again. So this strength curve is called an ascending, descending strength curve, which is different from the descending strength curve that I was talking about earlier. Now, because the strength exerted within the exercise is different between both exercises, it actually really works different portions of the muscle itself, and that's extremely important. So the balance of the muscle, of the entire muscle, or the, the, the posterior chain that you are using, needs to be exposed to different strength curves. So an exercise change could be from a 90 degree back extension, move into a 45 degree back extension, and the change in exercise selections here is enough to help break those plateaus. All right, so make sure you change the exercise if you hit that wall and choose smart exercises to change it to. Point number three, okay, and this point is often the point that people overlook. Point number three is all about looking at your weakest link. You may have heard me speak about this before, and that is when we look at any sort of big movements, big movements need to be uh, supported by your stabilizing muscles and smaller muscle groups. So for example, if you're doing any sort of presses, overhead presses, your deltoids, are a primary muscle. And yet, the smaller muscle groups that help to support your deltoids in its pressing or any sort of pulling movements would be your rotator cuff muscles. So it's very important that your body needs to understand that your smaller muscle groups, your rotator cuff muscle, is strong enough to support the action of the larger muscles. Because if it doesn't, then understand that your body in its attempt to protect itself would actually hold you back from exerting too much strength. Because if you do, you could get injured. So your body is very smart and your body doesn't want you to get injured. And that's why often you find that when you're pressing something heavy, you may suddenly lose strength, for example, uh, or your body will not allow you to press a certain weight. Why? Because if you overexert the big muscles and you, you lift something that's too heavy, your smaller muscle, your stabilizer muscle groups will not be suffice in terms of strength to support the movement itself. So by focusing and allocating some time, perhaps at the end of the workout to the smaller muscles or the stabilizing muscle groups, you really help to create a platform where you can move heavier load. And again, this is really with regards to breaking that plateau. So when you hit that point where you can't push past that plateau, start asking yourself, are your stabilizer muscles holding you back? Is that what you need to put some focus on? Typically, accessory exercises can be added at the end of the workout where you can focus on movements that would help to build these stabilizer muscles, to bring them in equality with regards to the ratio of strengths to support the larger muscle groups. Alternatively, if you feel that you are extremely lacking in stability, you may actually want to dedicate a phase of training to stability muscles, or put the training for stability muscles at the start of the workout, where you can actually focus on it so much so that you know that's the priority that you're giving it to. Now, I understand that this may be frustrating because the loads you're gonna be lifting is gonna be a lot lighter but this would be one step back, launching you two steps forward to lift more load. All right, guys, I really hope that those three points that I mentioned gave you some ideas of how to overcome the plateaus uh, that you might be facing within your training itself. If you haven't considered these points, make sure you do. 
Now, if you like the information that is being shared and you find that it's extremely helpful, make sure you hop on Learn ASP's platform. So it's learn hyphen ASP.com. Learn ASP platform, you would see seminars specific to breaking plateaus. Now, I've just released a series of master classes, which are courses specializing in fat loss and hypertrophy, and how you can overcome plateaus within these two particular areas. So make sure you check it out. In any case, I will see you in our next YouTube.